delay. I don't know what happened there. Um, we had a bit of a, a glitch on the old YouTube, which is always fun. So hopefully you found us from the original link has now changed, but hopefully you went through and found us live. So tonight on our tip of the day, I have got Yvette from Stash Hub, which I'm very excited to chat with Yvette tonight. Um, so welcome, welcome. I can see that people are slowly finding us. If you're watching back on replay, please do pop in the comments. Let us know that you're watching replay. And um, let us know where you're watching from as well. This is a new way that we've gone live. Sorry, I'm just going to talk something out. This is a new way that we've gone live before. I've not done this with two people before, so it's rather exciting. I believe it's showing on Stash Hub's channel as well at the same time, I believe. So we should have um, people from both sides. So that's great. Welcome. My name's Emma and I go live every Thursday at 8pm here on this channel with a live tip or trick of the day. And I thought it'd be fun to do it with a guest. So um, here we have Yvette and I can see there is a comment. Hello, found you. You did. Thank you. I think that might be Hillary if it is. Hello. Um, so we've got a few questions, but before we get into chatting with Yvette and finding out all her wonderful tips and tricks, I just want to remind you, if you haven't seen, that the Bag Makers box is now open again for subscriptions. Loads of people have been waiting for this and asking me about it. So finally, I can let you know that it is now open. I will pop a link in the description afterwards so you can find out what it is I'm talking about. It is a bi-monthly subscription box full of bag making goodies. And the next one is shipping really soon. So if you're interested in that, jump on that because there is limited stock left. Okay, and I can see there are some people watching, so do let us know where you're watching from. The comments seem to kind of flash up quite quickly, but hopefully we can grab them. Okay, so welcome, Yvette. <laughs> Hi, Emma. So great to be here, and hello to everyone who's watching live and on the replay as well. And where where are you? Where are you right now? Are you, you look like you're in your sewing room, but where is that? Yeah, so I'm at home. This is my sewing area. So there's my sewing machine there. Most of Doug's guitar still on the wall because that yeah, that used to be his area. <laughs> um, so yeah, we were, so I live in Surrey in the UK. Um, so this is my home, and we've got we live in quite a small flat. So this one room is like the kitchen, the living room, the dining room, the sewing room, <laughs> Doug's office. It's like the everything room. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Sally said hello. There was another comment as well that popped up. Um, unfortunately, they do pop up quite quick, quickly on the, um, the phone, like how this kind of system is. So apologies if we miss your your comment. Um, but that's amazing. I didn't know that, Yvette. So you just have one big room and then you have it kind of sectioned out. Yeah, so we recently like, like rearranged like the furniture so that now like the we just swapped, swapped around where the table and the sofa was so now the table is like next to my sewing area so I've got my sewing table in my area as well so I can leave my mess on there and it doesn't take over the entire room just the half of it <laughs> that's good that's good and obviously with that must come a huge amount of organization because if you've got one room that you have to kind of multi-use I'm imagining you're very organized yeah, so I've got a cupboard um, just to the side of me here, which has got most of my sewing stuff in. So it's um, an IKEA PAX system, they call it. So it basically is like a wardrobe, but then you can customise what you want inside it. So it's got these kind of big like basket drawers, um, which I use to keep my scraps and my paper patterns and, and like projects I'm currently working on and tools and stuff. And then I've got a bunch of shelves, which have got my fabric and things on big That's boxes with my patterns in and what about notions as well have you got all your notions in there as well yeah so uh, maybe i can show you quickly if i just unclick you from the tripod and i did see a comment flash up i think it was ruth apologies if i um didn't catch your name but um she said she's been using your app for a while and loves it so we'll get on to that Oh, I mean, <laughs> so this is my cupboard. I haven't prepped it. I wasn't really planning to show it. So this is the reality <laughs> of the situation. But this is my fabric up here on the top shelf. So this is like my whole fabric stash. So I'm actually hosting a fabric swap in Woking at the weekend. So it's actually, I've managed to reduce it a bit. 
which is quite good. So I'm bringing a few things to swap. So this side is mostly like cottons and then this is like more viscose and drapey things. This is a sort of failed experiment, um, which is, it was a tiny armchair that I tried to make, but it didn't really work out. So this is like kind of full of scraps. <laughs> and then this shelf is all my patterns. So I've got these really useful boxes with my patterns. So I tend to get PDF patterns and get them printed A0 because I mostly do like garment making. So I've got patterns in those boxes there. And then these are the drawers that I mentioned. So this is all my scraps and like smaller bits of fabric. It's so organized. Uh, patterns and sort of projects in there. And then this is Notion. So I've got these spool pods with all my threads and bobbins in, which is really good. Cool. I've got, a, oh, this is so, your top <laughs> stitching thread. That I, I say I recognize that. <laughs> And then I've got, so some buttons are just like in this bag. And then I've got this thing, which I got off my dad because he had it in his garage with like screws and stuff in. And then he went off it. So I claimed it. So I've got things like um, sewing labels and stuff in there. That's brilliant. I've made it like a tiny filing system. I think you can see Yeah, it. it's, it's so um, organized. I'm very yeah. impressed. I think. I feel like now the pressure is on to be extra organized because it's like my whole <laughs> brand with Stash Hub. But um, yeah, so everything is, is locked in my own personal Stash Hub. Um, and so with the stuff like the Notions where I've got several different boxes and, and places where I keep buttons and things, I can add the location so I know mm -hmm. where to look as a particular one that I think that I'm going to use. So that leads us very nicely on to what we have alluded to. So what is Stash Hub? So Stash Hub is the sewing organizer app that my husband and I have created together. So basically you can just use the app as like a database to catalog your fabric collection, all your patterns, and then you can pair them together to create projects. Um, and there's like a bunch of other features as well, but that's the sort of core of the app. Um, and I'll our aim really with the app is to like help sewists feel less overwhelmed by all the stuff that they've got and make it easier to like plan projects and actually make things and fall back in love with your stash when you you know know what you've all got and it's not just this sort of giant uh, to-do list that's hanging over you. You're cutting in and out for me but I'm hoping that it's just for me and not people watching but um, if it is just just stick with us I'm sure it's just a blip and it will pass and I did see a comment flash up saying that you couldn't find us but you found us now and apologies for that. Um, the, we had a bit of a, a YouTube issue I don't know what happened but it would not let us go live on that original link so really sorry about that but glad that you have found us now um so yeah so the stash so we obviously met at the beginning of september well obviously for us not obviously for people watching um when we did a 24-hour sewathon together with sew over it which was brilliant um and yeah and when we met when you said that that's what you do i couldn't believe it because i have wanted an app for doing this kind of thing for the longest time so I was like, right, I really need to get on that. And actually, although I haven't been great and I haven't done too much on the app, a little bit, um, it has actually made me think about my whole stash and uh, and just the organisation of it all. And that it's kind of in my vision now that I need to get it sorted and get onto it. So that's been really good. Um, and obviously, as a bag maker, I have a lot of different supplies as well. So I'm excited to get kind of even like the interfacing, you know, organized and on there. So I know what I've got. So I don't because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's kind of gone. Oh, yeah, I need some, I don't know, waterproof canvas or something. And then I've ordered it. And then right at the back of my stash a few months later, I'm like, oh, man, I already had that. So with the app, because you can catalogue it all, you won't have that issue. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And the with the notions as well, like, because obviously there's a lot of extra things that you need for bag making. So we've made the notions section in the app very customizable. So, you you know, we've got a few sort of basic um, categories to get you started, you know, like thread and buttons and zips. But then if you wanted to add like I don't know bag feet or something specific you can just add that 
yourself as like a custom um, section so that you can keep them all separate from all your other different things. That's great. That's really helpful. And then I like that you then you sort of grab your fabric, you grab your pattern from your library that you've inputted and then you marry the two and then it tells you how far through your project you've got, which is really cool. Yeah, it's a great way to keep organised as well. So how long have you had the app for? How long has it been around for? So this month, like this week, in fact, is our like one year birthday. So like since our official launch, when we launched the subscription, which is really exciting. So we're actually, I haven't even announced it yet. So this is the first time hearing about it for anyone who's live. <laughs> we're actually running a set on the Stash Hub Plus subscription. So um, yeah, this is one of our things that we're doing to celebrate our first birthday. So we're half price at the moment. So if you, you're on the fence about it, we'll, you'll have the whole month to sign up for half price. Um, I feel like very soft salesy at the moment, but if anyone's interested, <laughs> you can get half price off at the moment. Um, yeah, Doug's, Doug's been working on the app for probably another year before that as well, before we launched, because um, originally he made the app for me. And then I was like, this is really good. Like everyone needs this. So then we decided to like roll it out to everyone. Um, so yeah, it's been kind of a crazy year getting it, you know, because we, we're still, still developing a lot on the app and improving it all the time. And yeah, it's been, it's been really crazy. That's amazing. And so, and I'm impressed at how like neat your, you have, you seem to have quite a smallish stash compared to a lot of people. So I'm quite impressed by that. Um, so. Yeah, is that just how you work or? Yeah, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't attribute that directly to Stash Hub, but I think I've, I've always been, like I've always wanted to know what I've got in my stash because I didn't want to feel like, you know, I had stuff and I didn't know what to do with it, that sort of thing. But I found when I first started sewing, I bought quite, you know, bought quite a lot of stuff and then it sort of, it takes you a while, you know, because you you buy, you're like, oh, well, I buy the good fabric, but then I'll also buy some other fabric that's like cheaper that I can use to test it, and then you, and then you, you know, it, it, it you just end up sort of building up things. So, uh, my very first thing was like I had this like, word document with just stuff written in, and that was dreadful. Don't recommend that. Um, and then for a bit, I was using Trello, which is like a sort of business Kanban board type system where you just make cards which um, a lot of people do use and it's, it is can work, but it's not set up specifically for that. So, so um, yeah, then Doug was like, oh, surely there's an app for this. But, like, you need an app. And then, yeah, the rest is history, really. <laughs> no, it's a brilliant idea. And like I say, I really need to kind of delve into it. And I, I have sort of started it for my dressmaking um, and uh, I did put on, you know, a couple of projects one of which I completed at the weekend, so that was exciting. Um, and you might have seen it if you follow me on Instagram and follow my stories. Um, but yeah, I think I need to delve more into it, even if it's just for dressmaking as a start, because it's a little bit overwhelming at the minute because I've got so much. <laughs> um, and, you know, yeah. and because I'm a pattern designer, I always kind of feel like I, like often I will just be like, oh, well, I need to make that tomorrow you know I need to do the prototype or whatever so I, I need a fair amount of stash here that I don't know what I'm going to be kind of making it into um but still I think it's great to even if you just start off with a little bit of your stash and put it on there and then you can it will snowball I'm sure so that's really cool yeah this is a piece of advice that I would give to people that are like thinking about getting started with stash of is like don't put pressure on yourself to um, like do add everything straight away because it then you know the whole point is that you're feeling less overwhelmed using stash hub. So I don't expect anyone to like you know fully upload their whole stash all at once. Like maybe you could just start with the projects that you want to make that month or that week or just add your new fabrics that you just bought or something like that just to you know get into it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, I just saw a message flash up from Donna, and apologies, Donna, we had a bit of a YouTube glitch. I don't know why, but it wouldn't let us go live on the original scheduled 
uh, live space. So sorry that you haven't found us till now. Um, Stacey is saying, is Zoe here? I'm not sure, but hopefully Zoe will answer if she is. If anybody would like to share the link for this and go over to the other one and pop the link in the comments, that would be amazingly helpful. Um, thank you so much. I'm so glad you found us. Um, yes, yeah, Zoe is here. Hello, Zoe. Um, so we've just been chatting with Yvette about the Stash Hub app and we've been going through it. And I wonder as well, um, or someone's, yeah, thank you, Jane, You're all being very helpful with each other. Thank you, thank you. Um, I wonder if you have any sewing tips or tricks that you'd like to share with us. Like sewing, sewing tips, yeah. Um, so I, I definitely feel like not an expert in their sewing, but I think my, my top tip is like, don't be afraid to like get the quick unpick out. Like, don't be afraid to unpick stuff. Like on most fabrics, st stitching is not permanent. So you can just have another go. And I think the final product will turn out much better if you just like suck it up, unpick it and then do it again rather than just carrying on. So yeah, that's, that's something I like. I basically use my unpicker on like every single project. It's just a part of the process for me. Um, but yeah, that's that's something that I would say, like, don't worry about, you know, doing it perfectly the first time because it literally doesn't matter. And nobody will know when it's finished. Being Ripper is my best friend. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, what else? Also, um, I find that changing the needle position on the machine can be really helpful. So most machines, even really basic ones, you can change the needle position, even if it's just like move it a bit to the left. Um, and I find that's really good for like top stitching um, because then you can like line up the edge with the middle of the presser foot and then your needle is to the side. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it means you can get it in a straight to line. You can line it up and see where you are. Yeah. Um, and also so on some patterns. So I recently made um, the Tilly and the Buttons Mabel dress. And in the instructions, it, it gives you some very random, like, distances that you need to sew. It's like, sew this bit 33 millimetres from the edge. <laughs> Great, thanks. So, but being able to move the needle, I can move it, like, three millimetres to the left. So then I can line it up with the um, with the, three, the 30 millimetre line on the thing so I can still know where I am. Yeah, I think someone just commented saying their old machine, you can't, can't move the needle position. But yeah, it is um, it is something to check, though, in case your machine can do that, because it is helpful. Yeah, yeah. I think um, one of the times I went on Sewing Street, because it's a new, well, it's not a new machine now, but they're obviously different machines than the ones that I have at home. And I was on with um, Stuart and I was, all, I was a little bit flustered because we were about to go live and I hadn't quite figured out how to move the needle over on the machine and he kind of looked at me <laughs> and I was like no no I just don't know which button it is but he's so lovely he helped me and we got it sorted but um but yeah just sometimes because sometimes if you've got um a machine that looks like it it can't move the needle over and I'm not saying that yours is like this with your um older machine um I think it was it Donna that commented um but sometimes you can have it on a zigzag uh, on a yeah zigzags on a straight stitch but move it across as if it was going to be zigzag for the width if that makes sense um so sometimes there's kind of ways around it but yeah some machines don't my semi-industrial just goes straight so it you can't move the needle left or right um but what you can do on those machines that you can't move the needle you can also tape a little bit of uh, washi tape or masking tape on the uh, base of the machine as well and use that as a guide i do that sometimes if there's something that i want dead straight um in case that helps if your machine doesn't um but those are great tips as well and also i meant to ask you how long have you been sewing for how long um so i bought my sewing machine in 2019 which was quite fortunate because it was 2020 that i really got into sewing um so i wasn't you know trying to get a sewing machine when nobody could buy one um but yeah so i, I bought a sewing machine in 2019 because at the time i had pet rats and I wanted to make them some like hammocks and little beds and stuff. And they, they seemed just crazily expensive. So I was like, oh, well, it's just a little square. Right? Sure, that can't be that hard to make. So I did do sewing lessons at school, but they were really dreadful. And I just, the, the teacher was really frightening. 
and the projects were really boring. <laughs> like one of the things we had to do was a jacket for your water bottle to wear. And I remember just being, you know, a sort of 14 and just being like filled with rage at having to spend my time working on this project because it seems so ridiculous. And I just finished it and then went home and put it straight in the bin. I was like, <laughs> so I I think I'd be really surprised if you told my like teenage self that this is what I was doing now. I'd be like, so <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, I got like I think I saw adverts for the Stitch Festival, um, like on Facebook, and then I bought the Tilly and the Buttons book. And um, so I was like, I can, you know, I can make a tote bag. Why can't I make clothes? You know how like when you first start and you've got no fare. And so then yeah, basically it all just started from there and. Then during 2020, I just got really into it and like through the Instagram sewing community as well, like that really motivated me to, you know, keep going and yeah, I met loads of people online as well. So it's been really fun. Oh, that's brilliant. And yeah, I love that because a lot of people don't have that kind of not of no fear and they kind of like, oh no, I can't make that. I'm I'm a beginner, I'm a beginner. But I'm always like, what's the worst that can happen? You waste a little bit of fabric, maybe, or you have to unpick it, like you say, and do it again. That's okay, too. Like, there's no, everybody unpicks. I don't care if anybody says they've never unpicked or they don't unpick still, they're point blank lying. I still unpick. I've been sewing my whole life. Like, everybody must do, because we all make mistakes. We're human. Like, that's the whole point, right? You know? Um. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was listening to this podcast. I can't remember what it was. It might have been a Love to Sew podcast with with Wendy as the guest, maybe. But uh, anyway, the guest on the podcast was saying that if I ever mess up a project, like beyond repair, and it just has to go in the bin, and I feel upset about like wasting money or whatever, I just think to myself, this project cost this amount. It would have cost me way more to go to fashion school and learn how to do this. So I was like, that is a really good point. Like, you know, every project is like a learning experience. And if it doesn't work out, then at least hopefully you've learned something, even if what you've learned is you don't want to use that fabric again or you didn't <laughs> like the pattern. Yes, absolutely. In fact, weirdly, today I was looking at how much of my student loan I still have to pay back. So that was fun. <laughs> Gosh. speaking of fashion school um but yeah so yeah absolutely and you know there's there's no there's no wrong is there really because you can refashion it you can cut it up make it into something else um or you know i um last year as well i found that you can actually take all your scraps to and maybe people don't know this i don't know but a lot of uh, charity shops will accept your scraps even like off carts anything tiny tiny little scraps they'll take them or big scraps you know that fabric that you can't use that you've spoiled or whatever reason um they will actually take them because they can kind of get money for the rags basically so that's quite interesting and i love i love that as well so um yeah that's great and i kind of learned a hard lesson in the film world when i was making in that you know in terms of kind of redoing things and I'm not saying you should always redo things, but if you're not sure and it's something that is important to you that it looks good or that your top stitching is straight and you're not sure if you should redo it. I remember um, my boss, I was, I kind of went up to him with something. I can't even remember what it was, but I went up to him and I was like, is this OK? You know, have I done this OK? Well enough or whatever. And he, he was like, well, the fact that you're asking me means that you need to redo it. <laughs> quite brutal but I still I I still kind of live by that like if I'm asking myself is that okay then it's not okay because it's not you know good enough standard um but on the other hand you shouldn't also let that stop you from going further and know that if you're a beginner you know we all make mistakes and it's okay like you've got to learn somewhere so it's all good I think a part of the learning process as well is like learning your own like tolerance limits as like because even in like professional sewing there's like a, you know an error to tolerance on everything so you know you just have to look at it and be like am I okay with this yeah. and that's your you know because and I, and I think that's why it can be so much more difficult if you're sewing something for somebody else because you're like I would be fine with this I would still wear this 
but I know it's not perfect and am I okay with like giving that on to somebody else so I I I tend mostly just to sew for myself if I'm honest it's much less stressful um and I think people don't they don't realize that that's a part of the process that you're going through as well like thinking oh god this is person you know is it going to be good enough yeah whereas the person who receives it they have no idea like they don't look at the stitches they're like whoa a dress amazing but I think it is quite it's harder isn't it <laughs> yeah and I think else. they'd be quite shocked if you told them well this dress took me like four or five hours they'd be like oh what <laughs> like, you know um but it's also good to tell your non-sewing friends that because then that starts them thinking along the road of sustainability as well and where they buy their clothes from and stuff like that. And um, and maybe, just maybe, you can pull them into the sewing world. <laughs> Get them hooked. <laughs> no, that's brilliant. And um, do you have anything coming up for Stash Hub? Like you said, you'd, you've got your one-year anniversary, so you've got the half off. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got a lot going on this month to try and like celebrate the month. So I'm going to try and do a different thing for each week of the month. So we're going to launch the the 50% off sale this week, but that is going to run for the whole month. And then um, the week after, we're going to do um, the we're going to do a sale with a bunch of fabric shops. So um, Emma's Emma's joining the sale as well. I think I give you a live view as a sneak peek, but yeah, so if you download the Stash Hub app, we've got a section in the utilities, which is called like the discounts and vouchers. So we're going to put in a discount from a bunch of shops um, as a little treat for our followers. So yeah, that's exciting. And then the week after that, I'm going to do a whole week of Stash Chats where I'm going to talk to five people like every night in a row. Um, so we're going to get um, all the guests are going to be people that are ex sewing bees. So I'm, I'm really excited mm. for that. And then the final, I um, haven't quite got that far in the planning yet, but I think probably we'll do a giveaway or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really exciting this month. And I kind of want to like celebrate everyone that supported us with the app because it's been, yeah, really like it, the community side of it has been like absolutely amazing. And like just getting feedback from everyone's really helped us to, make so many improvements to the app That's as well brilliant. yeah the sewing community is so special isn't it like how welcoming and how supportive everybody is and 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 it's just so lovely like I don't actually have any friends that sew around me like close friends so being able to kind of go online and go in my Facebook group short plug for my Facebook group which I'll pop in the link as well below in the comment in the description sorry um just being able to go on there and go I've made this hey guys I've made this or on your Instagram or whatever and then you know that they they appreciate it rather than like your partner tries to be supportive it's like oh wow you made that um but yeah it's not it you know it, you you get that feeling that no one else understands when you make something don't you so it's it's great to have that support as well yeah I, th I feel like the sewing community is like such a supportive like quarter of the internet I feel like social media and stuff can get a really bad rap but like I think in the sewing community everyone's so supportive and like they just want to see each other succeed like even uh, you know businesses will support each other which is really amazing so it just it definitely feels like a community not just people you know trying to get you know get followers for themselves or whatever it's like people genuinely engaged with everyone else and really you know excited to get inspired by each other yeah really absolutely nice. and I think it's important to get inspired by each other to keep evolving and pushing the boundaries especially as a designer I'm trying to constantly kind of push ideas and try and think of new ideas and things like that so um it's great that people are supportive and not like there are I mean obviously I have come across some super competitive people who I just kind of stay away from but um but the majority of people in the sewing community are so lovely and welcoming and supportive like you say and everything so that's really good and while we're on that subject I have noticed that a few of you have liked this video please do hit the thumbs up because that helps to tell YouTube that you're enjoying it and it helps to show 
YouTube, that they should tell more people that we are here, that we are live. Um, so thank you so much. And um, if you haven't commented below as well, let us know where you're watching from so we can say hello back to you. Um, but I think we might have come to the end of our live for tonight. Have you got anything else that you wanted to add that I haven't asked you? Or um, No, I don't think so. I'm just really excited to be here and, yeah, have an opportunity to talk about sewing. I'm sure everyone in the in the comments is, um, you know, enjoying having a sew, sewing chat happening as well. I think it's, uh, it's just really nice to have people that have got the same interest um as you but yeah if you are interested in um in organizing your stash we've got a blog and a few tutorials as well just uh, about how the app works if you want to just like see what the features are before installing it and stuff like that um and yeah i just post a lot of like silly comedy reels and stuff on our instagram as well if you want to um want to join in with that fun but yeah um thanks so much to everyone who's watched live and Thank you, Emma, as well, for uh, inviting me on the show. It's been really good fun. Oh, you're most welcome. It's been lovely to speak with you. And I will just mention, shout out to your amazing blue jacket that you made, that you posted today. That's really cool. On your... Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll okay. show it quickly. Yeah, show it. <laughs> Speaking of sharing, sharing things that we've just made. <laughs> this, is, this is my favourite, the buttons. Oh, wow. Are they from Ethel and Joan? These are... Pigeon Wishes buttons, and then I've got some labels from Little Rosy Cheeks. Oh, um, there was a, there was a kid actually that came to Little Rosy Cheeks, and he was like, "I want to use these pencil ones as like the tag on a pencil case." You know, when you have the little tag on the end, so when you hold the zip. And I was like, "Like this is such a good idea, and you're very cute, and I love you." <laughs> it was so sweet. Like, I don't know, like an eight year old boy or something. It was so cute. Oh, oh, that's brilliant. That's so backwards, but it says yesterday that I put on the back um, and I did some colourful bias binding because yeah I recently um, left my full-time job to work on Stash Hub and my amazing colleagues bought me a simplicity bias binding making machine so that was really exciting so now I'm just making bias binding whenever I've got the excuse. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, I think someone, someone just said in the chat um, where, where do we find you? So we're um, mostly active on Instagram, which is at stash underscore hub, um, or our website is stashhubapp.com. But hopefully Emma can put some links in the description as well. Yeah, that's your, uh, say, I'll, I'll pop all the links in the description as well. And I'm sure if it's uh, visible on your channel, which it should be, then um, we can put, pop the links for us both on, on both, basically, wherever you're watching from. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. And so, um, yeah, we're just join us over on Instagram. You can find out all the information there. Check out the description below for all the links too. And don't forget, I am live on this channel, on Studio 77 channel, every Thursday at 8 p.m. GMT. We're on now. Um, normally, I go live and I share a tip or trick of the day, uh, of the day, a sewing tip or trick. So do join me back here every Thursday. And um, maybe you'll find another guest on here as well. Who knows? Maybe we started off a new a new trend. So thank you, everybody. Have a great evening and good night. Bye. Bye.